the Republican Party has officially rolled out their party platform for the 2024 elections, and longtime party activists are not happy. Delegates serving in the RNC platform committee had complained that anti-choice language that normally gets uh, bundled in with the RNC, uh, you know, their, their official platform being like for a national abortion ban has been dropped. In fact, here actually is their 2024 platform. So you have a lot of stuff about immigration, including the largest deportation operation in American history, <laughs> inflation, which, which is funny because uh, Trump's plan to do tariffs uh, and <laughs> that would actually increase uh, inflation, um, large tax cuts, for, large tax cuts for workers, right? Uh, more like corporations, but uh, it, it, again, there's a, a lot of things here and the weaponization of government against the American people. Stop migrant crime epidemic. Um, there was, there actually is no migrant crime epidemic. Uh, migrants actually do less crime than natural uh, born American citizens. And, but you, you can see that is their platform and there's nothing there uh, about abortion. Huh, interesting. Now, again, the RNC lists uniting the country as one of their top uh, priorities by bringing it to new records of success. Okay. Um, any details on how to do that? No, of course not. <laughs> uh, not only that, but not, number nine calls for the ending the weaponization of government against the American people. Uh, what does that even mean? What, what, uh, who's, being, who's being targeted by the weaponization of government? <laughs> okay, nobody. Nobody. Uh, these are nonsense slogans. These are things that Donald Trump talks about, which is basically what the party has become. It, it's whatever Donald Trump wants and is currently interested in and talking about. That's the policy of the whole Republican Party. They're the party of Trump. And, and by the way, this is not new, okay? They did this back in 2020 as well. First, they had actually canceled formal platform committee events, which pissed off longtime Republican activists. Uh, now, this time, however, they decided not to cancel those events, but they also really didn't do anything. They, they, they held meetings that essentially meant nothing in the long run. They wouldn't allow any amendments or changes to the party platform. Uh, and so, obviously, longtime anti-choice activists... We're not happy about this. In fact, here, here's, uh, here's one of them talking to a local news outlet. It's never happened before. I've, like I said, I've done this several times. There was, no, there was no committees. We always had subcommittees where we can go in and read, work on a section of the platform. We can propose amendments, uh, debate them, add them. Always happens. I've done it many times. And then that would usually take today, and then tomorrow we would come back and meet as the complete platform, and sometimes there'd be more amendments. They didn't allow any amendments. They didn't allow any discussion. Uh, we, they rolled us. That's what they did. We only spent thousands of dollars to be here. And what the thing they told us they were going to do isn't what happened. Didn't, none, of, none of it happened. She added, this has never happened before. I've been coming to these events since 1992. The first time we haven't had a pro-life platform. I've never been treated so badly. <laughs> so uh, look, I, I, I want to just take a second here. I'm going to lap up the irony of an anti-choice activist who is angry at being forced to go along with something that she didn't want. In this case, a platform. I, I'm just saying, uh, it, the irony here is, is delicious. Like, oh, are, are you expect us not to abort this platform? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it seems to be what you're calling for, that you didn't have a, didn't really have a voice or, or a choice. Oh, what does that, what does that sound like? Mm, God. Uh, now, of course, the reason that the Trump party platform opposes a federal abortion ban and doesn't have this language in there, because normally they do, is because the polling on it is disastrous. <laughs> According to an uh, AP NORC poll, around 8 in 10 Americans say Congress should not be passing a federal law to ban abortion. Yes, that's right. About three quarters of respondents oppose a federal law banning abortion at six weeks, and six in 10 oppose a better, uh, federal law banning abortion at 15 weeks. So even most Republicans, by the way, about two thirds, according to this survey, say 
we should not have a nationwide abortion ban. Hmm. So, I mean, look, uh, that, uh, those numbers are pretty stark, okay? The American people, not on board for a national abortion ban. Uh, and, and so now the platform, going back to that, basically it simply states that the Republican Party opposes late-term abortions and leaves the rest up to the states, meaning they don't have to do anything, right? Uh, and here's the thing about late-term abortion. It's actually only done in the cases of medical emergencies. Now, Republicans are trying to spin that as, ah, uh, Democrats want uh, abortion up to the moment of birth, and then sometimes after. No, uh, that would be murder. And second of all, uh, the vast majority of late-term abortions are a result of medical emergencies, okay? This is, this is not a situation where you're, you know, the woman is crowning and it's like, oh, I've decided that I want an abortion. No, that's not what happens. Uh, that said, anti-choicers raged online. Uh, in fact, let's start with a more mild um, response by Tony Perkins, president of Family Research Council, who said, the 2024 platform is a decent statement of campaign priorities, but not necessarily the enduring principles of a party. Unfortunately, the process was unbecoming of constitutional conservatives, which did not allow the document to be amended or improved. Hmm. Uh, national pro-life leader Bob, Bob Vanderplatz was a bit more vocal uh, about this, saying, Primary to winning any election is do not abandon your base. The 2024 election is going to be a turnout your base race. Abandoning life isn't right on principle, nor is it wise politically. Um, on this issue, actually, I just read you the poll numbers, and, and there's numerous polls that back up those same results. And actually is politically smart. Okay, people, the vast majority of Americans didn't, by the way, they didn't want Roe overturned either. And even more Americans do not want a national abortion ban. <laughs> okay, um, there's more. So, look, recently you had J.D. Vance, for example, who argued, oh yeah, I'm in favor of uh, mefepristone um, as a drug used for uh, abortions. Okay. Um and so he's like, oh, yeah, of course I support uh, people, women being able to access that. Oh, yeah, no, I have no problem with that. Uh, and then you have Marco Rubio saying the same thing. Uh, now, right-wing radio talk show host Steve Deese decided to go after Marco for that, uh, as he had also went after uh, J.D. Vance. Uh, here's uh, his post. Rubio was the most aggressive pro-life messaging candidate in 2016. He's now advocating taking life out of the party platform because he thinks he has a real shot to be Trump's running mate. And this is what Trump wants. Now, one uh, follower uh, of Steve Deese responded. She says, this is why I, I just can't vote for him. He is turning our party toward the left. Now remember, it, it, again, this is all in context of the polling, right? Where you have two thirds of Republicans that are like, not in favor of, uh, you know, um, doing this whole... National abortion ban, okay, not a good idea. Um, no, but that's turning the party toward the left. <laughs> this is moving the Overton window to the left. And she said, this is my top issue. If you can't get this right, I can't vote for you. Well, okay, are you going to say the same thing about Donald Trump, who also is not outwardly in favor of a national abortion ban? There's more. Former Trump attorney Jenna Ellis writes, the Republican Party platform has always advocated for life, not duck the issue behind hiding behind federalism and ignoring the 14th Amendment, Congress's clear ability to limit abortion and protect life. Mm. Oh, well, well, there's a lot of things uh, that you can interpret the life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness uh, clause in the 14th Amendment. Um, I mean, you could argue. If you're going to go with, well, obviously Congress has uh, it needs to step in and, and save lives, right? Well, then wouldn't that mean mask mandates? Wouldn't that mean, uh, you know, uh, vaccinations? Because those save lives. Uh, wouldn't that mean health care for everybody? Hey, I'm in favor of all that. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, yay, if you, if you want to do that. Okay. All right. <laughs> but no, that's not what she means. She just means, I have this extreme anti-choice agenda. I want to take choice away from women. Uh, and so... Uh, why are we not doing that? I'm going to be very, very mad that you are uh, leaving women with the choice that I'm not involved in. I want to make decisions for you in your life. That's what she's saying. She said, 
Further, RNC isn't just for federal offices. It supports statewide candidates as well. So now the platform opens wide the door for pro-choice and pro-LGBTQ with softening on same-sex marriage. GOP candidates on a state level too, which the RNC has already begun to support with Trump's endorsements. Why should the National Party agree it's fine if states want to allow abortions all the way until birth and support queer theory? As long as those states are cool with it. But that's exactly what they're assenting to. No conservative should support this. But hold on. It's freedom, Jenna. It's called freedom. Either Republicans believe in personal liberty or not. Hey, either they believe in federalism, states' rights, or they don't. Apparently, they're telling you exactly what they believe in. And they don't believe in states' rights. They believe in authoritarianism when it comes to controlling women's bodies and making sure that gay people can't get married, love who they love, and that trans people... Uh, by the way, uh, trans people uh, going against trans people, keeping them out of women's sports uh, is, you know, one of those things where they're actually... They actually did include it on their platform, which is hilarious. Uh, and, again, hilarious because it, it is also such a loser. This is not something that the American people are really concerned about. The American people are concerned about things like inflation, kitchen table issues, uh, and so, and democracy. Uh, something that apparently Republicans don't seem to believe in. The right wing does not believe in. Uh, now, here's the thing. These activists don't care about freedom. Uh, I think that's pretty, pretty clear on that. And Trump, by the way, Trump doesn't care about what these activists want. Why? Because all he wanted was the evangelical vote. Now, he pandered to that, but it wasn't enough in 2020. So now he's going to run on, I got rid of Roe, but that's okay because I gave the choice back to the people and I am against a national abortion ban. But that is not what these hardliners, what they were asking for. And well, sad day for them because they're outnumbered. What are they going to do? Vote for somebody else? No, they're pretty much stuck uh, with something, again, a platform that they don't want that they will be forced to carry to term. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon in order to get notified whenever a new video is released. And if you want to support independent, progressive media through this difficult time where it seems like everybody is shut down, you can become a member on our YouTube page, you can become a subscriber on Facebook, or you can go to my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf. Thank you.